Greetings, deeply loved children of God, and welcome to worship at Emanuel Lutheran Church in Washington, Iowa. I am Pastor Maureen Howard, and I greet you with great joy as we come together to give God thanks and praise. Even on this snowy, icy day, God is given glory. So welcome to worship. We have some exciting news, and that is, first off, we have a new baby born into the family of this congregation. Mike and Debbie Jewell welcomed a new grandson this past Monday, Benjamin James Morrison. Uh, he was born, like I said, on January 25th, and so we congratulate uh, Mike and Debbie on the birth of Benjamin. We'll also be lifting him up in the prayers of the uh, intercession this morning. Do I look a little brighter? Do I look a little lighter? <laughs> <laughs> this week we had Ace Electric in the building, in the sanctuary, adding new lights to the sanctuary. And so, Lucas, if you could share with everybody the, the lights that we have added. Along the sides of the sanctuary, we have installed new lighting. So when you finally come back to worship and are seated in the pews, there are no dark spots. We also have lighting on this first beam that uh, illuminate the altar area. And so we give thanks to Ace Electric and to you through the Renew and Rejoice, uh, Refresh, Renew and Rejoice project uh, for through your generosity, these lights have been installed. And when we talk about Christ is the light of the world, now when you enter Emmanuel's sanctuary, you will know that Christ is the light of the world as this sanctuary is beautifully lit. Also, we added new spotlights to each of the stained glass windows. So at night, the windows are beautifully illuminated. And now that snow is on the ground, the light through the night, it's reflecting off the snow and it just looks gorgeous. A bacon telling the world that Christ is our Lord and Savior. Uh, this uh, soon it will be Ash Wednesday, uh, so please mark that on your calendars. February 17th begins Lent, and that is Wednesday of Ash Wednesday. We will have live stream worship at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, but of course it stays live. Uh, well, that doesn't stay live. It stays on Facebook, uh, so you can watch it later in the evening. I will be under the portico between 12 and 12.30, um, placing ashes on your forehead, and then again at 7 to 7.30 in the evening under the portico where you will receive ashes and Holy Communion. So please mark that on your calendars. To participate fully in our worship, I invite you to go to our website, luthwash.org, and download our worship liturgy. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We begin with our Lutheran liturgy. Hear God's love. We, we hear, hear God's, God's love for the world and for, for us. us through forgiveness, forgiveness scripture, scripture, preaching, preaching liturgy, liturgy, and song. Hear God's love. Holy, Holy God, God, open, open our, our ears, ears to hear and our hearts to be transformed by Christ's words of love to and for the world. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured up out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, 
You search us and know us. You are acquainted in all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace through the power and promise of Christ Jesus. Our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven in the wake of God's forgiveness. We are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and spirit and the spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Amen. Let us together sing our gathering hymn on Jordan's bank the Baptist cry hymn number 249. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help, save, 
Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us together sing the hymn of praise, Gloria, and we will sing it twice through. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now proclaim the word of God. First reading is from Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or if I ever see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 111. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright Great are, are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who see it in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You, you have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the land of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. 
God in grace endures forever. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, whoever, who has this knowledge, that some have become so accustomed to idols until now they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family, <coughs> and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is, cause, is, the cause, is a cause of their folly, I will never eat meat, so that I may not be cause of one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Let us sing the gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel this fourth Sunday after Epiphany comes to us from St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, 
and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to, you. to you, O Christ. Last week, we were getting our feet wet in the Sea of Galilee as Jesus called his first followers and told them they would be fishers for people. And like fish caught in a net, people would thrash about, kicking and screaming, wrapped in Jesus' teaching. And like fish, being caught would die. Die to the ways that separate us from God and separate us from one another. But God breathes the Holy Spirit life into us, renewing us, recreating us into God's beloved, claimed children. And like fish, who give nourishment and sustenance to others, the baptized children of God are released back into the waters known as life, known as the world, to give nourishment and sustenance to those who suffer, to be Christ's very body in the world, setting people free. Today's gospel, Jesus is showing us what setting free looks like. Jesus and his new students walk north to the shore to the city of Capernaum. And as was his custom on Saturday, the Jewish Sabbath, the Jewish day of worship, Jesus enters the synagogue and worshiped, gave God thanks and praise, prayed and nourished his relationship with his father along with the rest of the congregation. This Saturday, it is recorded that Jesus is invited to read scripture and to preach. But unlike the scribes who needed to footnote and bolster their preaching with words of more authoritative rabbis, preaching that focused on laws and traditions, Jesus does not. Jesus preaches with the authority of God. Jesus is preaching focused on relationship, which is boundary-breaking. Relationship founded in God and proliferates throughout humanity. What a breath of fresh air. Not to be pounded over the head with fear-instilling laws and traditions which kept people enslaved and oppressed, but to be liberated in such a way the authoritative speaking makes it so. Through the authoritative speaking, you know it. You feel it. You are it. You are loved. You are worthy. You are wanted by God. And in response, God's gift of love, worthiness, and desire spreads from person to person with indiscriminate enthusiasm. Drawn in on the wings of this new teaching, drawn in by this astounding confirmation 
of love, worthiness, and desire. A man with an unclean spirit is enticed to enter the synagogue. And immediately, knowing exactly who Jesus is, holy, the Son of God, the Messiah, the destroyer of evil. Jesus is confronted by the demon, the evils of this world, which keep humanity in bondage and broken. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? In other words, go away and leave us alone. For the demon knows that the sheer presence of Jesus is the beginning of the end of Satan's rule and power over humanity. Jesus silences this unclean spirit and orders it to come out of the man. The forces of evil obey the lordship of Jesus the Christ. And with thrashing and kicking and screaming, leave. The authoritative speaking of Jesus does what is said, and the man is liberated. And like any conqueror, places a flag on land just claimed, Jesus, the conqueror of evil, places a cross on the forehead of God's beloved, claiming the liberated, claiming us as God's own, claiming the freed, claiming us as holy humanity. Yet, we are still living in the paradox of end. Conquered and not yet fully. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus, evil has been defeated. Death no longer is to be feared, having lost its control over us. But until Jesus returns and casts out evil forever, evil still lurks in the shadows, infiltrating our lives, luring us with twisted truths and false promises. What are the evils that continue to have us enslaved and oppressed, that keep the poor in poverty, the hungry in food lines, the marginalized outcast. What demons penetrate our hearts that cause us to see each other as them, different, to be shunned, that causes us to become so divided, we no longer engage in civil dialogue. What causes us to no longer believe agreeing to disagree is a viable option? What unclean spirits have invaded our society which allows communities to be targeted for marginalization? From health care to education, from housing to employment, from policing to banking. What Negative forces cloud our heads that we no longer think that the person 
seated directly across the aisle from us, a neighbor, a colleague, a friend, a family member, is no longer worthy of being listened to. No longer think the person right in front of us is valued as an equal. The church, the baptized children of God, the body of Christ are to name and confront these evils. For when Jesus speaks, it is, it happens. And through the church, Jesus continues to speak. Through the church, the demons that lurk in the shadows and bring chaos to our lives can be silenced and driven out through the lordship of Jesus the Christ. And the kingdom of God's liberating freedom may proliferate through humanity. My brothers and sisters in Christ, you are the church. You are claimed and marked by the cross of Christ. You are empowered by the Holy Spirit to name, to silence, to cast out these unclean spirits. Yes, they will thrash, they will kick, and they will scream, but they will obey. You are the church, followers of Jesus, fishers of people who live under the liberating lordship of Jesus. Breathe, breathe a breath of fresh air into a world still ensnared by unclean spirits. Fresh air which liberates in such a way Jesus's, your authoritative speaking makes it so. Through Jesus's, your authoritative speaking. Humanity knows. Humanity feels. Humanity is loved, worthy, desired by God. Freed. Freed to love and serve each other. And when we speak authoritatively, the world will be astounded. Amen. Let us together sing the hymn of the day. O morning star, how fair and bright. Hymn number 308. Let us together sing verses 2 and 3.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by the church, by, guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. After each prayer petition, I will conclude with let us pray, and I ask that you respond, have mercy, O God. For all who share the gospel and proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders, for the church and its ministries, let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For all God's works in creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forests and farms, and for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists. Grant comfort and healing to those affected by all disasters, especially tornadoes, mudslides, and winter storms, so they may come to know new life through you. Let us pray. Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For government and leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals and legal aid attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizers, for all responsible for the well-being of civil society. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, for those who are sick and hospitaled, those with COVID, those living with HIV, AIDS, those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry or homeless, unemployed, for caregivers, hospice workers, home health aides, and all in any need, especially for those we name before you now, in our hearts or spoken out loud. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For the newly born, especially Benjamin James Morrison, may Benjamin always walk in the loving light of Christ. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For the concerns of your people worshiping as Emmanuel Lutheran, those who travel, those beginning new college semesters, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, and for other needs in our communities. Let us pray. Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, 
for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you, Margie. Lucas, the peace of Christ be with you. Mike, the peace of Christ be with you. During this time of social distancing, we continue to give God our thanks and praise through our tithes and offerings of thanksgiving for the mission of the church, including for the care of those in need. We invite you to mail your checks to Emmanuel Lutheran, sign up for automatic withdrawal calls, simply giving, or go online to our website, luthwash.org and give online. At this time, we will receive your tithes and offerings of thanksgiving. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Amen. Let us give thanks for God's life-giving word. Let us pray. Holy God, light of the universe, teacher of truth, giver of goodness, we hear your word in the scriptures proclaiming to us your wisdom and inviting us to follow your call. For speaking this word, we thank you, O oh God. We thank, thank you, O oh God. God. Your word came among us in Jesus, our brother, who preached your righteousness, healed the sick, and revived the brokenhearted. For giving us this word, we worship you, O oh God. We, we worship, worship you, O oh God. By your Spirit, bless all who receive this word that it held in the mystery of the body of Christ. We may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. For sustaining us with your word, we praise you, O oh God. We praise, praise you, you, O God. God. Blessed are you, holy God, around us, with us, and in us, now and forever. Amen. 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 Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, come your will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. Amen. Deeply loved, claimed, worthy, wanted children of God. Receive God's blessing. Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes in which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet in which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands in which he blesses all this world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are Christ Jesus. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus the Beloved, fill you, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us together sing our sending hymn, O Lord, now let your servant, hymn number 313. love. We will share Christ's love with our neighbor. Thanks be to God. 